Hey bestie, welcome back. Happy Valentine's Day. If you have a Valentine, if you are your own Valentine this year, whatever it is, we're gonna get into the spirit of February and in the spirit of Valentine's Day and read red and pink books for 24 hours. I haven't done a 24 hour reading challenge in quite a bit, in quite a bit, and I failed the first time I tried it. So let's see if we can be successful this time. So I went through my whole bookshelf and took out all the physical books that I have that are red or pink. So those are my options for this challenge. First up, which I'm actually really tempted to read for some reason, I'm just kind of feeling the vibes, feeling the mood, is Crescent City, this big chunker of a book by Sarah J Mass and Ever since the third book came out, the hype from the third book came out, I've just been so intrigued. Like, these books, I have the first two I got when I went to Ireland, so I have, like, the UK covers, which I love so much. But I feel like they've just been staring at me. Like, they've just been staring at me and telling me to read them. So I feel like I might try to read this. It is, like, a big chunk of a book, and I've heard, like, like the first chunk of this book basically is, like, kind of harder to get into because there's a lot of, like, world building, and this is, like, adult fantasy, so it's a lot more brain power, I guess. But I really do love Sarah J Mass's writing. And I've heard really good things about the series, so I'm very intrigued by this. I'm also just absolutely obsessed with the cover. Love it. And I love, oh my gosh, I just love being a girl. Like, just the red and pink is making me so happy with my sweater and this coffee mug and all the books. <laughs> like, I'm having so much fun. I think this is going to be such a fun and cute video. So, option one is Crescent City. The next option we have, which I think goes perfectly with our vibe, is Things We Hide From The Light, which this series in particular... The Knockemout series? Yeah, the Knockemout series. Her covers are just so gorgeous. And is this series my favorite of all time? I don't know. I think, you know, it is actually pretty cute. I really do love Lucy Score's writing. I read by a thread by her and that was really good. That was a five star. Things We Never Get Over, I think I liked. I just like her writing. I think I do. And I like the romances. I think I really do like her writing. I like the series, but what I was trying to say is like the cover is so pretty that it makes me want to like it even more, if that makes sense. So yeah, I do judge books by their covers. Yeah, so this is another option. This is basically like small town romance. This follows two other characters that were kind of introduced in the first book of the series. So it's like kind of like an interconnected series. So this follows like a new couple and this is high up on the list as well. And then we have Addicted For Now, which has been on my TBR for a while now because I want to make my way through the entire Addicted series. And this one is the third book in the series. It's the last book in Lily and Lowe's POV. And then the other two move on to like the Calloway sisters, their stories and everything. So really excited to get into this. This is basically like a lot of drama, angst. I feel like reading this kind of gives me the vibes of like One Tree Hill. So if you like that show, I feel like you might like the vibes of like the series. It's just like drama and romance and I just eat it up. So that's definitely an option of what I could read for this red and pink reading vlog. Next up, we have Bad Blood, which is the last book in the Natural series. I'm curious to see how this whole series ends off and what happens and the whole murder mystery to it. So definitely recommend the series as a whole. But yeah, this is definitely an option for what we could read in this video. Next, we have a book that was sent to me. This is Say You'll Be Mine by Nana Kumar. And this is like a cute romantic comedy, fake engagement, fake dating, like which, you know, I love those tropes but it looks really cute and pretty quick read, I would say. So this is definitely on the list too. I just love the cover too, it's so cute. And then we have Sarah J Mass Crown of the Night, which I couldn't, is this pink or is this purple? It's like a purpley pink. You know what, that brings another point I would like to make. Where's the purple book? I feel like if the next book in the series that comes out isn't purple, I'm gonna be shocked. Like I feel like I'm gonna be so surprised if the next book in that series isn't purple because it would look so good. It would just look so good. And the other day I was looking at the Throne of Glass series and you have all these different colors, but you have two orange books. It messes with the whole thing. I think, let me show you. But my point is, so you have Air of Fire, right? Orange. Tower of Dawn, orange. Why? I mean, they're different like covers, so I'm okay with that. But you have a different color for every book. And then you're gonna have two orange? What's up with that? Why not purple? That would've been so cool. Cute. That would've been so cute and cool. So I'm really hoping that the next book in the Akatar series at least will be purple and I think that would look so cool with all the other books. Anyway, purple rant over and done with. This purpley pink color is Crown of the Night which is the second book in the Throne of Glass series because I'm doing my little reread. So this is the next one on my list as I make my way through the rest of the series. So that's another option as well. And then this is a recent purchase of mine. I haven't heard anyone really talk about this series. So I'm so excited to see what I think about it because it's rare that I like go into a book and I have no prior knowledge of like Goodreads reviews or booktube, book talk reviews. So it's both scary and exciting because I'm like, what if this is like a six star read for me and I have no idea. It's so exciting. So there's a couple books in the series, so I'm really excited to get into it. It's kind of marketed as 
like a Six of Crows kind of vibe, so very intrigued by that. It seems like it has like this element of mystery, and I think it's also a fantasy series, so it's like fantasy mystery, like darker kind of vibes, so I'm really intrigued by this. And then the last pink red book that I have on the list for this video is The Rom-Commers by Catherine Center, and this was an arc that got sent to me. It comes out June 11th, so you can pick this up June 11th, but I loved The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, so I've been really intrigued to see if I'll like this one, and just have like a cute little rom-com to read. I love cute little rom-coms and fantasy, as you can see from like, basically that's all the options that I have and all that I have on my shelf is romanticy and rom-coms pretty much. So, oh. So these are all the books that are on my list, and I guess we'll see, like, I feel like I'm a really big mood reader, so it really will depend on my mood, obviously, what I end up reading. So I'm excited to see what, what I end up reading in this video. So, very exciting. I'm a little scared because I haven't done a 24-hour reading challenge in a long time, and I failed the first one, so I don't know. I don't know. But I have coffee, so hopefully that'll keep me going through this. It's like whenever I think about 24 hours, I'm like, oh nothing. That's nothing. And then when I actually do it, I'm like, oh my god, it's two hours in and I want to go to bed. So we're going to do the best that we can here and see if we can actually do this without stopping the timer. So like when I'm eating dinner, that'll count. Like it's just how much I can read in 24 hours straight. Let's freaking go. Oh, I didn't even choose. Oh, let me stop it so I can choose a book first. Okay, so you know what? I think I'm going to, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so in my head, oh, I don't know. Okay, in my head, I'm kind of between these two, Crescent City or Things We Had From The Light. This is intimidating me a little bit, and if it wasn't intimidating me a little bit, then I would go right into it, but then also it's so early in the day, and if I wait till later to read it, then like my brain is really gonna be lights off no one's home. So maybe I have more of a chance of like getting into it if I start it now is my thought process. You know what, I think I'm gonna do it, and I could always change because we're mood reading, right? That's what it's all about. So. Starting Crescent City, and this will all be spoiler free, so don't you worry. Starting now. Can you see it? Boop. I'm already confused, but I feel like with any fantasy book, like you just kind of have to keep going even though you're confused, and then it kind of like clicks as you go in, so like, I'm just here for the vibes. At this point, no idea what's going on, no idea who anyone is, but that's fine. So we're just here for the vibes, here for the vibes, and hopefully as this goes on, it'll make more sense. So. Wanted to give a little update. I gave up on Crescent City for now at least. Maybe I'll get back to it, but I just you're telling me you guys are reading this book and not being absolutely confused. I don't even think I finished the first chapter. I'm only up to page 18 and I just was having a hard time getting into it. I feel like if I get back to it and like keep going with it, it'll probably get better and better. But for now, I'm just like really struggling to get through it. So took a little break. I figured I'm probably more in the mood for like a romantic fluffy little book or like a romantic comedy or just like a romance book in general. I feel like I'm more in the mood for that. So I left off 18 pages of Crescent City and then I read up to chapter 3, page 26 of Things We Hide From The Light and I'm really loving it so far. Even from like the first chapter, the first line, I just forgot how much I love Lucy Score's writing. She just like, she's hilarious. Like the way she writes books is so funny. I love her writing style so much. Just forgot how much I love her writing style and how much I love like the coziness of the romance and the small town vibes, just so good. So I'm really enjoying this so far. Basically you start off and we follow Nash in this one and I think Nash and Lena, like that's the main couple in this book. But basically Nash, again, like I read things we never read over a while ago so I don't really remember what happened at the end but basically where this picks up nash is a cop and he's dealing with a lot of trauma he's in a really dark place i think based off like what happened at the end of the other book but basically he's just feeling very numb and not feeling anything and then lena comes in and makes him feel alive again i'm assuming is what's gonna happen but it's just really cute and i'm loving it and i'm eating it up especially for like the valentine's day vibes a little romance <laughs> 
update. I am only 60 pages in. I didn't read too much because I kind of took a break to film a couple TikToks and do like social media stuff because, you know, gotta be on that grind. Gotta stay on that grind, you know? So anyway, sorry, that was embarrassing. Um, I'm two hours and 56 minutes in, so about almost three hours. And yeah, didn't read much, but we're, we're making progress. And listen, 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 okay? Let me defend myself here. Um, we're gonna be reading for 24 hours straight no sleep so you know we may hit a bit of a lull we may take a few breaks but we're gonna power through and it doesn't matter how much we read as long as we're having fun the vibes are immaculate today i don't know something's in the air and i just have great immaculate vibes today i'm feeling the vibes and i hope you're feeling them too because you deserve you deserve it you deserve all the happiness in the world and you better talk nice to yourself in the spirit of valentine's day you better give us some self-love i feel like i'm talking really fast because that's probably because i've had a lot of coffee this morning but my point still stands talk nice to yourself, be nice to yourself, and make time for the things that you enjoy, because that's important too. Love ya. Let's get back to reading. Also, so I'm at a little spicy bit right now, and it's so funny, because like, mainly what I read is romance books, but I always get so like, surprised, I guess, by the, I get taken aback by the spice bits, and I'm like, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Nash, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? We're at the very beginning. So I'm on page 93 now, but this happened to me in the first book too when I was reading it. The dog is named Waylon, and then the daughter is Waylay. It's like every time I read it, like for a second, I'm like, wait, what is the daughter doing? Meanwhile, it's describing what the dog is doing, and it like bugs me out. Like, why couldn't she have chosen like a different name for the dog? I just don't understand. Like every time it describes what the dog is doing, I'm like, what is this little girl doing? Odd. But then I'm like, oh no, that's the dog. I don't know if anyone else had that experience of reading these books too, but it's just like, catches me off guard sometimes because it's like, why did the little girl gallop into the room and plop on the rug at someone's feet and looked around for a treat? Why would you do that? Why would, why, why, why would you do that? But then I'm like, oh, right, that's the dog. So we're four hours and 51 minutes in, so about five hours in, and I'm still working my way through this. I mean, it is a big book, so it might take me a little bit, but I'm on chapter 18, page 194 of this book, and I love them already. It's just a very cute, cozy, but also very spicy type of romance, and I just love a good, like, small town romance. It's so fun. And I just love, like, the found family in this, and like I said before, Lucy Score's writing is just so funny. I just get a kick out of it. Even her, like, chapter names are so funny. I just love them. So, loving it so far. Highly enjoying. And then I think after this, I don't know, like, I'm enjoying it, but then I'm like kind of losing steam. Laying in bed right now is a dangerous, dangerous game. <laughs> I looked at the time and it is 3.38 p.m. in the afternoon. I do feel embarrassed because <laughs> it is not late at all, but I'm like already. But no, okay, we're gonna stay up, pull an all-nighter, mark my words. I'm gonna wait a couple more hours until I have another coffee and then I feel like that will help I was gonna say put me up, stay stay me up. Oh my god, <laughs> help me stay up. What my brain just short circuited just then. That I think will help me stay up. I'm not really a big energy drinker. I've never really I've never really tried energy drinks, so I don't have any. So it's just gonna be coffee, coffee, coffee. Also, as I've been reading, I've been watching because again my attention span is zero. So I love to have like a million different things going on at once, or else it feels like unproductive for some reason. Like I don't know why that is. But basically, I always like usually have YouTube in the background when I'm reading. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but this time I do. Why am I explaining this so hard? I don't know. But basically, I've been watching 24-hour reading challenges in the background because then I just feel like it's motivating. I feel like I'm reading with a friend. Also, reading this book made me kind of remember why I didn't fully enjoy Things We Never Get Over It because I really did enjoy it. And I really liked the main character in that one. I just didn't love Knox. And even in this one, when like Knox comes up and he's like just grumpy and angry, or whatever. And I know it's supposed to be like funny and cute, but to me, I'm like, what's going on? You know what I mean? So that just like annoys me. I guess this character annoys me a little bit. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so I think I'm actually enjoying this one. I guess the main couple in this one better than the first one. But I do really love the first one and I love the whole premise of the first one. And especially like the whole beginning, how it sets up with like her trying to find her sister and then the whole found family that happens in the first book. So I love, I think I love the story of Things We Never Got Over a lot better, but I think I love the male main character better in Things We Hide From The Light. I think I like Nash better than Knox. It's just like, why are you so angry and like cursing all the time? Like, calm down. Let's do some inner work. Let's let's do some inner work and figure out why, why are we so angry all the time? You know, I don't know if anyone else felt the same way about Knox, but even in this book when like he comes up, 
and I'm just like, we're still doing the same stuff? We're still doing that? <laughs> anyway, those are my riveting thoughts on that. So let's continue on reading. Baby, there's something wrong. I say nothing, I was just thinking how we don't have a song. And he said, our song is a slim screen door. Sneaking out, they tapping on your window. When we're on the phone and you talk real slow. Cause it's late and your mama don't know. Our song is the way you laugh. First eight man I didn't kiss her and I should have. And when I got home, for I said amen, asking God if he could play it again. We are officially on to coffee number two. It is 7.06 p.m. and we are eight hours and 20 minutes into the challenge. And I finished Things We Hide From The Light and I really did enjoy it. I think like I said before, I definitely liked Nash better than Knox, I think. It's an interesting story. But I will say with Lucy Score's books, they're just so long. They really are just so long. And in my opinion, like in a fantasy book, I get why maybe a book is like 574 pages. You know what I mean? I get it. Things are happening. But like in a romance book, even though this is interesting and it does have like a solid plot, it's just, I don't think a romance book should be 574 pages. I just think with Lucy Score's books, although I highly enjoy them, they could be wrapped up. I feel like they could be wrapped up a little quicker. I'm just saying. So I think 4.75 will be my rating for this book. But again, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend if you want a good romance book. I love the series so much. So on to the next. But actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna do a little Q&A bookish, Q&A bookish game aspect every time I finish a book, depending on how many books I finish in this video. But I figure let's take a little break and I asked you guys on Instagram for any bookish questions. So I'm gonna see what you guys put and then I'll answer them and then jump into the next book. First one is, what is your favorite No Spice romance? No Spice fantasy romance that I've read recently is Powerless by Lauren Roberts, and that's No Spice, but like the tension was so good. And the buildup, like sometimes I really do think Spice just hinders the romance sometimes. Like depending on the book, sometimes I feel like I feel the romance even more when there's no spice. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it just makes it more believable that it's like a love story and it feels deeper when there's no spice for some reason in my head. But I do enjoy spicy romance every now and again, but I do find that my favorite romances tend to be less spicy. My favorite fantasy romance that has no spice is probably Powerless. My favorite no spice romance... I feel like maybe Check and Me? No. No, wait! Oh my god, I'm forgetting one of my favorite romance books. Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. That book was so cute. Yeah, I would definitely recommend Better Than the Movies or Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Those two are really good, no spice. Next one is, on a scale of one to infinity, how excited are you for Nothing Like the Movies? So Nothing Like the Movies is the second book of Better Than the Movies. And I'm so excited. Infinity times infinity. Next one is how to stop negative self-talk. It's tough, it really is. I feel like part of it is also knowing that you're not the only one dealing with that and going through that and everyone deals with negative self-talk and deals with their insecurities. So you're definitely not alone in that. I would say just recognizing how powerful your thoughts actually are. Like anything that you say about yourself holds more power than you realize and really does affect the way that you view yourself and the way that you view your life. So first like, acknowledging that like what you say matters and how you talk to yourself really does matter then you'll be more aware of it that like when you catch yourself having a bad thought or like talking negatively about yourself cut yourself off right there recognize the thought and say you know what no that's not true that doesn't have to be true i am beautiful i am kind i can do this i do deserve this and just combat those negative self-talks like in those moments like catch it and then tell yourself what you would want to be true be delusional until it comes true because really your life is your perception of things and you get to kind of shape that by like the daily practice you know what i mean and you might not feel it right away but over time the more you get into the practice of doing something the more that it's like second nature to you and the positive self-talk will be more of your habit the more that you practice doing it and also just like prioritizing doing the things that make you happy and like doing things whatever it is that makes you feel good about yourself on the day-to-day -day can really help with like positive self-talk and working towards things that you like making time for the hobbies that you enjoy if it's doing your hair and makeup and putting on a cute outfit that makes you feel cute like that helps too in the day-to-day -day life so those would be my little advice for stopping negative self-talk it's hard and everyone goes through it but you are so beautiful and so amazing and so deserving of everything you got this. On to the next question. Oh my god, the new book, If I Had Told Her. Okay. Girlie, I'm gonna be very honest with you. When I read that book, it did make me cry. Like, I felt all the emotions. And 
in that way, I'm like, oh, then was it a good book because it made me feel all the emotions? Like it did what it intended to do, I guess. But whenever I look back on that book, I feel anger. You know what I mean? Like I get angry because I'm like, how dare you? You know what I mean? Like I just, I think it's because I just love happy endings. So the fact that that book was so sad and the ending was so sad, like I'm mad at it. Like I don't like it because it had a sad ending, which I know doesn't make sense because I don't know, in my brain, I'm just like, I hate that book now. How dare you? How could you? You know? So I'm not going to choose pain and I'm not going to read the second book in the series because I know that that's just, why would I choose that? Why would I choose pain? You know what I mean? So I feel like when I look back at that book, I'm like, did I even like that book? I don't know. I really don't know. So those are my thoughts on the new book. If I had told her, I'm not reading it. I'm not reading it. I refuse. I simply refuse. If you can live in any fantasy world, which one would it be and why? See, this is a tough one because would I survive any fantasy world? I don't know. I really can't say. I feel like I gotta say Akatar. I feel like that would be fun. Like, if I was a fae, you have all the powers. Except I wouldn't be- I feel like I would be more of an Elaine girly where like, I will not partake in the fighting, but I'm like right there with you. Like, I'm here for the support, but um, will not be fighting. Will not be doing that. If I could choose a fantasy world to go into, I'd probably choose Akatar fantasy world. So that is my answer and I think those are all the questions that you guys put in so far. So with that, we are going to continue on and choose our next read. I feel like Ace of Shades is really calling to me. I don't really know what it's about. I'm kind of going in very blind. So it's very intriguing. So I think I'm going to start this book. I, okay, one thing I love about books is when they have really good opening lines. Like that's one of the things that I absolutely love and I eat up every time. This one, the first line is, if I'm not home in two months, I'm dead. The intrigue, the mystery. I'm already intrigued from the first line, so this has really good vibes so far. I'm feeling feeling hopeful. Maybe we can find a five-star reading this video. Maybe it could happen. It's dual POV. I love a good dual POV, especially in a fantasy romance, so I'm loving it. So I think laying in bed was just a bad move because I was getting sleepy and it's only 8, 12 p.m. I am switching my book up because we're just kind of mood reading in this reading vlog and I'm liking Ace of Shades, but because I'm like not at my second win yet, like I'm feeling very tired. So I feel like my brain power isn't at full capacity. So I figured I would switch to another like romance book and I really wanted to read this book too. Okay, so I changed my shirt cause I thought that might revive me a little bit, but I do think the coffee is kicking in now. I'm trying to hide myself up here, seeing as it's only 850 but i will say i am 12 pages into this book and i'm already loving it i forgot how much i really love Catherine center's writing i think she's definitely like maybe my favorite maybe she's my favorite because the bodyguard gave five stars and this is already giving five star potential i just love her writing style so much it's just so fun and it just has like the best like fun time rom-com vibes i just love it so much so very intrigued to where the story is going to go. The premise is set up really well. And I also love how like, you know what it's a good rom-com book or like a good romance book when there's like a deeper element to it or a deeper topic that like the main characters are going through. Like with this one, it's her and her dad. I don't know if I gave a description for this book, but basically it follows our main character, Emma, and she is a screenwriter. And there's this famous screenwriter, Charlie, who to her, he's like her screenwriting hero. But you know what they say about meeting your heroes. So it ends up Charlie is like gonna be a grump from like the back door, but I haven't gotten to that part yet where they meet. But basically he writes really good screenplays, but his most recent one is a rom-com, which the manager says is terrible. So she has to go and kind of help him and kind of entice him to let her work with him to make the screenplay better and to help him write the rom-com screenplay. But yeah, so she kind of like meets her hero and he ends up being a little grumpy grump. And I'm excited to see what that meet cute is like because I haven't really gotten to it yet. Oh, so I think it's so funny, like after grad school and everything, I'm studying to be a speech language pathologist because in this book, it says how the dad got into an accident and he got a traumatic brain injury, which left him partially paralyzed on one side. And then he also has an inner ear issue, Meniere's disease. And it's so funny because like these terms that pop up are basically like, part of what I was studying for for the praxis and what I w was learning in school so it's crazy how I feel like I notice it more now because of obviously because I learned it for all my other SLP girlies out there I guess yeah so really loving it and I love how like 
there's gonna be this deeper element to it that hopefully I don't cry but I have a feeling I may but that's why I love like the balance of like you have the cute rom-com and all the rom-com energy but then you have like these deeper heartfelt topics that come up and that just make it feel like a more powerful book like a more don't know what word I was looking for there but just a good book just a good book so this definitely has five star potential for me I think so only time will tell and we have a lot of it. I'm already very deeply attached to this family and the family dynamic is so cute that I'm genuinely scared because I have a feeling of like impending sadness that I'm just not ready for because I'm already attached. I already love them. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little scared because I love them. pages in of the rom-comers and just her writing is so good that like I haven't had the urge to even pick up my phone which is a good sign I wasn't sure what you liked he said so I just got it all and he got her like sushi sandwiches pizza pastries like all these different types of foods what a man so time for a little snacky snack our late night snack is a classic peanut butter banana my wash my face off <laughs> and wash my makeup off because I figured oh my god it's not even when I tell you the time you're gonna laugh because it's not even that late but I think it was just because I woke up early today which was bad mistake on that part on my part bad what bad mistake on my part because I kind of decided to do a 24-hour reading challenge randomly today so didn't really prepare myself for that but basically we're entering into the delusional hours because I feel very overtired to the point where delusion will ensue. But my point was I didn't wash off my makeup because I just know that once I do that, then it's like game over, then I'm definitely gonna wanna go to bed. But if I have makeup on, then that will keep me from falling asleep because rule number one always is to never sleep with your makeup on. Oh my God, my battery's gonna die. I'm gonna have to charge you guys. So, see you in a bit. So I'm gonna be so honest, I was like this close to letting myself take a nap, which I knew was probably not gonna be a nap and it was gonna end up a full sleep. So I stayed strong. And what I did was I put on some lip gloss because I feel like somehow in my brain, like that'll make me stay awake. And what immediately woke me up, I sprayed this like setting spray. It's like a primer setting spray, I don't know. I just sprayed it on my face and surprisingly that worked. I feel rejuvenated. So there you go. Two phase, three in one hangover cure for your 24 hour readathons. So I'm gonna get all cozy, continue reading, and we're not gonna fall asleep. No, no, no. Hey guys, so it is 4.55 now. I woke up at 4.30 and I fell asleep at like 11.30. So it didn't stay strong for too long, but we're back and we're gonna finish off this reading challenge reading as much as we can until 11 a.m. today. We are 19 hours and 19 minutes in to this challenge. And I'm on chapter, oh wow, I'm on chapter 19. <gasps> How funny. No, it's not that funny, but <laughs> chapter 19 and 19 hours. I'm loving this book so far. It's definitely like five star read for me in my head. It keeps going the way that it's going. I'm just loving it. I'm on page 168. So good. This is so good. I love them. I love their dynamic. They're just so cute. And this book is so fun. And I'm loving it. Like I said before, like reading this book, I haven't even had the urge to like pick up my phone at all or like get distracted because it's that good. Like I'm invested. I'm having a ball. Having a grand old time. I am extremely tired though. So but we're gonna stay strong until eleven and see how much we can get done and read. Um and that is the plan. He's tying her shoelaces for her. I repeat, he's tying her shoelaces for her. They're so cute, I can't, they're so cute. Okay, so I'm on page 202 now, but remember there was a quote I wanted to share. I'm using my, literally using my phone as a bookmark because I can't find my bookmark. Oh my gosh, okay, so a trope that happens in 
I don't really see it happen a lot in books, but definitely like in rom com movies, like when the girl like kisses the guy on the cheek and then he's like taken aback, whatever. Like that's so cute to me, and I love when that happens in a movie, and it happened in this one too, and it was just really cute. And I'm eating this up, but there was a quote that I really liked. I need to find it. But it was one thing to live your dreams in theory, and it was absolutely another thing to clumsily, awkwardly, and terrif terrifiedly, terrifiedly, ter terrifiedly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let's try again. I also hate reading out loud, so I don't know why I do this to myself every time I make a reading vlog, but the quotes are just so good, I cannot share them, but I also hate reading out loud, so. Actually, that's a lie. That's a total lie, because when I was doing my extern, I was doing an externship at an elementary school, and I would, sorry, I would read um, the kids to the kids. What, what am I saying? Sometimes in our sessions, we would use like little books and like cute little children's books. And I loved, I love like reading that. <laughs> I give up on speaking at this point, but, but basically I, I enjoy reading aloud children's books to kids. So maybe I do like reading it loud and I'm a big fat liar. Let's try that quote again. But it was another thing to live your dreams in theory. And it was absolutely another thing to clumsily, awkwardly, and terrifiedly do it for real. Which is so true. You know, chase your dreams. Chase your dreams. Even if it's not perfect, even if you have no idea what you're doing, just keep going. Keep going. Chase your dreams. This is your life, man. Make it how you want it. You only get the one. You only get the one. So, oh my gosh, I took out my phone and I didn't, what page? Oh, I said I was on 202. Okay, good. All right, back to reading. I will update you guys in a little bit. Mwah. <laughs> guys, I, I can't. This book is so cute. They're so cute. I love them. He just bought her flowers. And it's her favorite flower. He said, because you always look at them longingly when we're at the market, but then you never buy them. So cute, so cute. 20 hours, four more hours to go. Let's do it. Six stars, six stars easily. Oh my, like, this book was so beautiful and good and cute and fun, but also really beautiful. So it can't be where you're going that matters. It has to be how you get there. That's what I've decided. It's all about the details you notice and the joys you savor and the hope you refuse to give up on. It's all about writing the very best story of your life. Not just how you live it, but how you choose to tell it. Oh my gosh, this book was so, so, so good. I'm so glad I picked this up. Six stars. Six stars. Probably my new favorite, dare I say my new favorite romance book? Dare I say it? I think I love this book. Everything about it. And I need this to be a movie so I can watch this movie as well because this would also make for a great movie. Wow, what a successful written vlog this has become. So it's officially eight o'clock now, which means, what book do I pick next? I don't know. Okay, so I think, okay, don't be mad. Don't be mad, but I'm so sorry. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. You know, like we attempted the 24 hour reading challenge. Maybe I'll try it again. Maybe not. Yeah, I just really wanna take a nap right now. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because I really don't wanna to waste today either. Like I wanna be productive today and I feel like if I stay up until 11 and then nap, then like the day will be gone. So I feel like I wanna nap now. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. You probably don't care at all. But yeah, basically all to say a good reading vlog, okay? We kinda of like did, I can't even say all nighter because I fell asleep literally at like 11.30, but we made it, we made it to 21 hours sort of, because I fell asleep, but we tried. And you know what? We enjoyed the experience. And if I learned anything from the messaging of this book too, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about the story. And I enjoyed my time. Hope you enjoyed yours watching this. And with that, a little recap. So in this video, two very good reads. I would say, Honestly, looking back at my reading for this, I feel like Things We Hide From The Light is probably sits at maybe a four star for me. I don't think it's any higher than that, but four star is still a good rating. Like it was a really good book. Love the romance, had a great time. Could it have been shorter? I think so. But overall, had a great time reading it. 
and I feel like Things We Never Got Over and this book too, kind of both. I feel like this series right now for me kind of sits at like around a four star read for me. Maybe a little bit higher as a whole, but yeah, I think four star, I think. But yeah, this is a six star read for me. So honestly, a successful, successful reading vlog, not a successful 24 hour reading challenge, but a successful reading vlog because found two great reads. Read two cute little pink books for Valentine's Day and for February, even though I think this video is gonna go up. Actually, you know what? I might edit this video and post it tomorrow. I think that's what I might do. And then I have another video that I need to edit and that'll go up next week. So stay tuned for that as well. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you in the next one. Love ya. Bye.